Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for uh, making us a part of your day. Going to have a conversation, a, a brief conversation with Dr. Shalesh Kantak. He's an assistant professor of physical therapy at Arcadia University, and he's joining us on the program today to talk about the National Institute of Health grant uh, to study bimanual coordination in stroke recovery. Welcome to the program, Dr. Kantak. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I thank you for taking the time this morning. And I did mention that, of course, that you are the assistant uh, professor of physical therapy there at Arcadia University. Uh, brief background about yourself, and let's talk about this uh, NIH grant. Okay. Um, so I am a, um, I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Physical Therapy at Arcadia University. And I also hold the position of a research scientist at Moss Rehabilitation Research Institute, which is a part of Moss Rehab Hospital. Um, and I describe myself as a clinician scientist um, because I am a neurologic physical therapist by my clinical training. Um, and I'm also a neuroscientist by my research training. So what I essentially do um, is I combine my clinical and research expertise in my lab, mm -hmm. trying to answer some specific questions about um, motor recovery after stroke and other neurological injuries. Um, and most of my research uh, is done at uh, my lab, which is called as the Neuroplasticity and Motor Behavior Lab um, at the Moss Rehabilitation Research Institute. And I also teach neuroscience and neurologic physical therapy the students at Arcadia University. Now, for our listeners who may not be uh, as familiar with stroke and its causes, what causes stroke and what is it about the recovery that is so unique? So there are multiple causes um, for stroke. And stroke essentially is a, a, a death of a few brain cells um, because of ischemia or lack of blood supply to that uh, to those cells, and those cells um, die away, and so it is an irreversible damage to the nervous system. Um, and mostly, it is vascular in nature, um, which means that uh, there is a reduction in the blood supply to the brain cells, and uh, those brain cells die away. Um, now. Stroke has multiple um, impacts um, on the person. So, and those impacts um, affect movement, they affect cognition, they affect um, sensations, they affect um, motivation, they affect a lot of these um, brain pathways that are um, that are important for many of our functions, such as movement and um, um, how we think. Um, and needless to say, these, these deficits then have a significant impact on how people can function in their life. So for example, we know that almost 60% of the patients who uh, suffer a stroke have persistent deficits in the use of their uh, weaker hand um, in activities of daily living. And so that significantly reduces their quality of life. Um, so that is, that, is, that is one of the main focus that, um, of my research. So this, this bimanual coordination recovery, if one hand is affected, one side of the body is affected, and you say these cells are, are not going to return, yet there is recovery. Why not work on the strong side, uh, the unaffected side, as opposed to working with both sides? So there are multiple layers to this recovery. The first layer is that even though a part of the brain is gone, there are other residual pathways in the brain that contribute to uh, recovery of the affected side, the affected limb. We have enough evidence today to suggest that um, the weaker side of the stroke can make significant and clinically important functional gains. Um, and so if we just switch on to the other side, that in a great way 
uh, reduced is the potential of the weaker side uh, to recover. So if you look at uh, clinical therapies across uh, in the last two decades or so, they have primarily focused on uh, how can we improve the function of the weaker hand. And I think that is pretty uh, pretty important, very, very important. But I think what we have found through multiple studies is that patients get better with the use of their weaker hand. However, if you actually look at, look at their uh, ability to use that hand in activities of daily living, that does not recover. So they can move their hand better when you're testing them after therapy, but when they leave your clinic and then when they go outside into their own lives, they are not using that hand. So there is a there is something that we are not doing. Does it uh, matter the type or the, the cause of the stroke? Has that been studied, or does it um, does the study pick up where the when the damage has already been done, regardless of the cause? Um. The the current study that I'm that we are doing has this component of um, how how these patients recover this by manual coordination, but we are also looking at what predicts that recovery. So we are look, we are doing a, um, a magnetic resonance imaging of the brain, and using that uh, MRI of the brain we are doing something what we call as lesion symptom mapping. So we map where the lesion is in the brain and how much my patient is recovering with this uh, bimanual uh, uh, therapy. And so that will give us an idea about um, one, which patients are, which patients particularly are affected in terms of their use of bimanual actions. And two, which are the patients, um, which patients are going to recover with this therapy? So um, the exact where the lesion is definitely matters. Now, where can our listeners go in and get some more information about this, uh, this bimanual uh, stroke recovery therapy and uh, more information about Arcadia University as well? Um, the bimanual stroke recovery, uh, the, the mo- more information about this study can be found at um, Moss Rehabilitation Research Institute's website, which is mrri.org. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, this study uh, uh, and more information about my research can also be found at um, Arcadia University website uh, under faculty and uh, um, uh, Shailish Kantak. Dr. Kantak, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud. And be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.